Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Saturday, February 1st, 2014. And behind me is probably the single greatest improvement that I have made to my rocket stove to date. Stay tuned. As I started to say, behind me is the single greatest improvement that I have made to the rocket stove to date, and it is a wood pellet burning system. Fully gravity fed, no electrical, no, no electrical agitation necessary. Although every once in a while, I will, I will confess, it does bind a little bit in the tube, but, and I have to give it a little, little tap like that to, uh, to fill the grate, but the modification that I've made to the, to the rocket stove is simply a drop-in modification that can be pulled right out at any time. It allows me to switch back and forth between burning regular wood or, between, or burning pellets. Uh, it's a wonderful modification and if, if uh, it works out as well as I plan and as, as, as well as I think it will, uh, I have split my last piece of wood. So uh, let's get right into it. During the process of trying different things to get pellets to burn in the, in the rocket stove, you'll see I have this tin can here that looks like I shot it full of holes with my pellet gun, but really uh, I drilled a bunch of holes in it with a quarter inch drill, actually a 3 16 inch drill, because I didn't want the pellets falling through. Pellets, incidentally, are one quarter of an inch in diameter as they're pressed through, so generally speaking, if you're going to make a, uh, a grate to burn on without them falling straight through, you want it about 3 16 spacing. So there's the pellets in front of it, and here's a shot of the can now after it had been inside the, the uh, firebox and burning for a little while. In order to get the first load of pellets to start burning, I had to soak it with charcoal lighter fluid and light it with my propane torch. Once I got the, coals, uh, the, uh, the pellets burning and forming a nice bed of coals, uh, adding more pellets to the top actually caused it to quench the coals underneath because the air is also entering from the top and they would not ignite. Pellets do not ignite very easily, but once they're going, they really go. But to get them going sometimes is quite difficult. So what I came up with next was an idea to place a curtain of pellets in front of the opening of the rocket stove. And in this picture here, you see a wooden block with some screws in it that I was using as a form to bend sections of straightened coat hanger that I used to build my first proof of concept prototype. This next photo is a side shot of the, of the first prototype grate that I made and this shot here is a front facing look. In this next picture you see the grate sitting in the rocket stove firebox you'll notice that the tip sits all the way at the bottom and front of the firebox and the back side of the grate sits all the way against the front wall of the firebox closest to the uh, closest to the the chamber this creates a sealed condition but i felt that the curtain of pellets would be loose enough to allow enough air to pass through that it would keep them ignited while it did work better than the tin can it still would not maintain a burn and eventually extinguished itself. This last photo that you see is a slightly different, uh, slightly different variation on the same idea. I noticed that while I was experimenting, I was able to lift the grate out of the firebox and move it around, and I found that the positioning within the firebox was extremely critical. And a light bulb came on and I realized that I needed to replicate the Venturi effect that is created when you jam sticks into the firebox opening. And this is the result. You'll notice that the width of the grate now occupies almost half of the opening of the firebox. And the, uh, 
the pellets in the bottom are burning quite furiously. All right, so the shape of my, my grate inside the burn chamber has changed a little bit. You'll notice I've got tabs on both sides that, that allow it to hang in the opening, and it is elevated slightly off the floor. Um, I have got a small load here. It's been burning for a little while. And I found that by adjusting the position front to back, I can actually change the air mixture. But it's burning extremely well and extremely steady. This last adjustment to the, uh, the grate has been wildly successful. Averaging about 550 degrees at the top of the stove. Steady burn just like that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Huge success tonight. Okay, so got uh, my pellet hopper. It's just a reused bottle, one gallon bottle of windshield washer fluid. I have it hanging from a metal bracket on the shelf above where the uh, rocket stove is located. See I have it filled with pellets. Comes down to a collection tube. This is a piece of what we call the orange is called a piece of inner duct. It's used internally in buildings for running fiber strands. This black section is just an extension of a flexible drainage tube, about inch and a half or inch and a quarter, Home Depot variety, just enough to give it some flex. This section of metal tubing is an aluminum wind chime that was thrown out. It's about an inch and a quarter in diameter, and once the pellets make it at least that far, then they will slide very freely going down that tube. I'm not worried about it binding. You can see right here, I do have a little bit of a sight tube where I can see if there are pellets inside the tube flowing down. And this has proven to be a little more difficult to light the first time than I thought. I'm going to, uh, let's see, turn on some lighting here. And you can see that I have, I have it soaked down in the bottom. There's a couple of embers that are still just burning a little bit. Um, it, takes, it takes a little something to get these pellets started. So I'm going to have to refine my method of lighting. But you can see how, how wide the grate is and how much of the opening that it blocks. And if you look down inside, you can see the grate reaches almost all the way to the bottom, about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. This pretty closely emulates what sticks would be inside the opening of the firebox. So without further ado, I'm going to try a little bit, uh, a little bit harder. See I've got a, uh, a piece of kindling down there to try and ignite it. I soaked it with a little bit of starter fluid and jammed it down in there and it still didn't catch. So, uh, and I've already soaked the pellets with lighter fluid. So like I said, takes a little bit to get this thing going. I'm going to have to work on my technique for getting this thing started. Okay, as you can see, the, uh, the rocket stove is going. There are the uh, pellets at the top of the grate. They are uh, feeding automatically down from the tube. All right. And I will keep the grate in this position until the uh, the pellets really start to uh, start to get cooking. And as the riser continues to heat up, the draft will increase even more and more. And once that happens, now you can see the 
once you start to see the coals on the back of the pile then you know it's really starting to go and then I will move the grate forward and block off the uh, the uh, the front of the opening here almost completely and all almost all of the air will enter from the back and through the pile at the bottom and keep the uh, keep the fire going once this thing really gets gets going uh, it cooks it really sounds like a rocket and it just keeps going it doesn't stop this is pretty exciting actually okay so this smaller aluminum tube that I was using as my feed tube for the rocket stove pellets was a little bit too small in diameter was uh, let's see inch and one eighth inside diameter and I have replaced it with a piece of scrap pipe that I had saved for someday today was the day that is one and three eighths in diameter so it's just a little bit over one and three eighths in diameter so a full quarter of an inch bigger in diameter and it has some pinholes in it that I covered up with some shipping tape back to back over the window so that the uh, pellets don't actually stick to the adhesive you can see how I've got two pieces of tape right over the window and they're back to back um, even right next to the stove it doesn't get very warm because of the convection currents that are going by it all right and up above is the pellet hopper it's simply held hanging to the lip by some metal hardware and you can see how I've got it just hung on the lip like so held in by the weight there's my pellets and there's the view looking down into the rocket stove I think the sound of this burn really speaks for itself doesn't it? that has not changed in uh, about an hour it just runs like that Every so often you'll hear pellets drop in. You can see the pellets. Dropping into the grate. I have incidentally ordered stainless steel 308L rods to make a grate out of stainless steel because this is not going to last more than four or five burns at the most based on the deterioration that I've seen so far but yeah there it is it's working and it's a beautiful thing the most significant modification I have made to the rocket stove since I installed it so that's going to do it from the lab for today. For my next trick, I need to figure out how to turn the darn thing off and stop the flow. I think I can just stick a pin through one of those openings and, and cause a log jam in there to, to make it stop. But I uh, haven't tried it yet, and it's getting pretty warm in here, and I need to turn this thing off so that I can uh, pull the pellet hopper off and play around with the grate some more inside the, inside the firebox. That's all for now. Everyone take care. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this modification. I will be posting plans and exact dimensions for this with uh, along with the existing plans. Uh, anyone who has 
purchased previous plans, if you would write me separately, I would be happy to provide you free of charge the additional updates if you would like to do this pellet stove, uh, this wood pellet modification for your rocket stove. So that is it for now. Everyone take care. Thank you for watching. As always, please rate, comment, share, and subscribe. And peace.